Jim and the uh, history um, has some uh, very powerful lessons for us. It hel helps us to uh, get a better perspective on the issues of the day. Uh, and today, one of the big issues is the pressure that the mu Muslim community in Australia is under. Their leaders are being called on to do more. Individual community members feel variously embarrassed, angry or conflicted by the violence that has been perpetrated in the name of Islam around the world, uh, and at least in one instance in our own country. Uh, this, earlier this week, uh, I had a very lovely um, Muslim taxi driver who poured out his passionate commitment to this country uh, to me, how he appreciated this freedom uh, that this country had uh, given him and his family, and how he appreciated the public education uh, that his children were receiving. He said he could not understand those who would seek to come to this country if they did not value these things. Like the vast majority of Islamic Australians, he was overwhelmingly committed to the, val the values of tolerance and freedom. And I say that I think it's important for us to understand that Australia has been here before. In the 19th and 20th century, it was Irish Catholics who were in the spotlight, whose loyalty and patriotism was under suspicion. The police, the Protestant polemicist, and indeed uh, some of the Catholic hierarchy believed the Australian Irish community sheltered devotees of the principle of violent insurrection. And in a striking parallel, there was even a crazed supporter of the Fenian cause who made an attempt to assassinate Prince Alfred during a visit to Sydney. Uh, there were mass rallies in response to this, and when leading Catholics described the acts of this Henry O'Farrell as that of a lone madman, uh, they, were, uh, they were held down. Uh, this was, it was felt by the community, part of a much bigger problem uh, that we had with, uh, with Irish Catholics. There were demands for purges of Irish Catholic disinfection, disaffection, and indeed there was an anti-Catholic union formed. And of course we had political leaders who got into the fray. Uh, Henry Parks never won to let a political opportunity go by, um, beat the drum and decided to exploit the hysteria um, um, and, um, and introduce bills, urgent bills into the parliament for the better suppression and punishment of seditious practices and, uh, and attempts. So there were... Um, so, Mr Speaker, I guess we need to look at what's happened in the past and look at the role of, of Irish Catholics here today. And, and we have the leader of the, uh, the, the Prime Minister himself, the leader of the, uh, the opposition, both indeed Catholics. Perhaps something unimaginable during the time uh, when Irish Catholics were under su uh, such deep uh, suspicion. Uh, so we've got to learn from this lesson. We do have a problem here at the moment with, uh, with terrorism, uh, and it's a problem, obviously, with the te technological capacities available today, which is one that we really must, uh, we must address. But it is a problem that we, um, as Muslim and non-Muslim Australians, must work together to resolve. We simply cannot make that mistake we made uh, 100 and 150 years ago to cast suspicion on, that, uh, on an entire community. Rather, we must recognise that, uh, that we can work together, we can move through this, and ultimately we will be a society when the absurdity, the, the Catholic Protestant sectarianism of the past seems absurd, I am confident if that we keep committed and focused, we can make that Muslim, non-Muslim divide equally absurd.